This morning, we are joined by studio uh, here in the studio by psychologist Dr. Camille Garcia. Good morning, Dr. Garcia, and welcome to Solar Daybreak. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. So let's talk about the impact no, of the calamity to all these people affected. Um, yesterday, we had one of our reporters who witnessed the devastation in eastern Samar. Now, you know, for those people in barangays who were... The, for, the, for those of them that felt that help never came for days, you know, what do you think is going through their mind? Okay, first and foremost, for somebody watching um, the news and everything, it is already devastating. What more for people who really experience it? It is more, um, the, the experience is so poignant to the point that um, they might feel the depression setting in. Probably the, the magnitude of the experience is not that really, that it did not sink in to them at this point. But what they're after is the fact that I must survive. So the thing that they do is just to please help us. We're hopeless. So they do things that are probably, um, let us say, it's a reaction of which they might do something um, negative to the point of doing looting or probably just get anything that they can pick up for them to be able to say ah, we can use this for our uh, for to comfort us to shelter us we can get food from other uh, people even though we did not ask permission because um, man per se the behavior when something like this happens is to think that they must survive and if they will not get any immediate help they will feel helpless mm -hmm. and after being helpless they become hopeless mm -hmm. and that's the breakdown right and when you break down the tendency is for man to become angry mm. and that's what's happening everybody gets angry everybody gets um it's it is more like a um dissociative reaction for somebody like if you're a good person but something tragic happens it's like you become uh, mr jekyll mm -hmm. mr hyde so the other side of you uh, uh, it happens and then you, the behavior becomes different so entirely some people become so wild yes. they become so aggressive and then they will um, say some invective word some words that you cannot swallow because they will say that the government is like this the people are like this they do not um, think of what we feel yeah, so when there's desperation you know the, they have a they switch to maybe a survival mode, mode. yes and, definitely um, and so do you think that, you know, because there was a lack of food and water immediately after this and people started looting these stores, so are there, ac are there actions, um, can it be justified and um, under understood by people that it's, it's okay? Okay, first and foremost, as a person, you have a choice. You know that stealing is not a good uh, behavior. When in times of crisis, if you remember during the time of um, Bohol, the Bohol earthquake, no looting was um, reported, right? Because of the fact that there are some people really, they are highly um, spiritual. At the same time, if you feel that um, being a person, you have a choice. If you want to survive, you can look for things or you can look for items that um, we can easily get and we can eat, we can uh, try to ask our neighbors, we can have a good support system. But this, um, probably because of the poverty, or it is a brief reactive um, thing. You know, when somebody um, gets into trouble and you don't know what to do, we have this so-called BRP. BRP is uh, brief reactive psychosis. It happens within the next um, 24 to 36 hours and it will last for three to five days that I must do something mm -hmm. to survive. Yes. So yeah. probably you'll do something that a misdemeanor. Actually, it's not a misdemeanor because you're stealing. And mm -hmm. a person has a choice. If there's a leader there that we should not do this, mm -hmm. we should be more disciplined. We should know that probably because of the fact that everything is not put into a uh, proper perspective but in the event that they were waiting for help for maybe a few days let's say one or two days and there was no help coming their way and they were so isolated that they didn't know what was what's hap happening what's happening in the world because they're cut off from the rest of the world 
Um, yes, it happens, you know, Claire. But then, let us say that this is an opportunity that God gives you to become patient. Mm -hmm. We forget the fact that there is a God who can really help us. And you know for a fact that every disaster, all Filipinos are together to share, to help. So, the reason that um, we can just say to our kababayans that please wait. Mm -hmm. We have to be patient because this is the first time that almost everybody wants to help. Mm -hmm. of almost all volunteers they you do not need um, to ask for volunteers because they come in bulk mm -hmm. just to help mm -hmm. you don't even ask um, other countries for financial aid because they knew yeah. that something of this um, magnitude happened and there is help or so maybe, all I have to do is just wait right or maybe even doctora no that whoever that store owner was if you said there is some kind of community um, communication between all of them then maybe the store owner could have been contacted and said okay let's just open it up for now so the children can eat and you know and will have food um, yes, that's true. You know, what happens is because if something like this happens, um, there's a tendency that one becomes um, panicky. There's anxiety mm -hmm. and then there's tension. If those things build up, the tendency is you become so aggressive. You, there's, um, you become an adrenaline junkie to the point that, no, we was uh, gate crash and no, we was get everything and this is the time to do because this is the only thing that can help us to survive and everything but there but now probably if there are um, new elected barangay officials there's or there are barangay officials mm -hmm. there to become leaders to yes. help them in the sense that please wait we are here mm -hmm. please wait ask your husbands ask your relatives to fall in line or yes. we get the names so that everybody will be given yes that mm -hmm. everybody will be distributed with the right goods and everything and then we should try to okay first street or what is what happened how many are dead there should be a system right it mm -hmm. should be um something that um other people even though they are not qualified to say that um I, i'm not a government official i'm not a local um, member of the barangays or anything there should be somebody who can stand and be a good support system to them okay. because that's so very difficult for somebody who does not know what to do because it will create confusion so in a situation like this one you really need somebody who will stay there as an authority figure Someone as a leader who yes. will man up to it and not muna yung mga pep talks it's uh, more yeah. of somebody who will have to yes. say ito um, ang dapat gawin you know um, Filipinos are uh, as I um, heard a while ago that Filipinos are very very resilient compared mm -hmm. to other countries other countries when the, um, just a um, simple storm surge they got uh, so they will get so uh, depressed to the point that there will be a breakdown. Immediate yung hopelessness. Yeah, the, the hopelessness is there. Mm. Unlike us, when you say, try to um, um, introspect the uh, previous uh, events that happened to Bohol. What is being reported? Ah, you see that the church, uh, Mama Mary is too, the, that's the only thing that happened. And then there will be a mass. You become more or less uh, calm to the point that you ask God for help and there is help. Now what about the, um, the long-term effect for those people and even children that witnessed and saw with their own eyes the wounded that were not being assisted, the dead people that were laying mm. on the streets, and what kind of effect will that have to these people? Okay, that, that's the importance of the briefing. Anybody can do the briefing as long as uh, those who will do that will be properly um, trained. Tra trained. Um, but for the meantime, as neighbors or probably as relatives, the first thing they should do is the children are very, uh, the first ones who are very resilient. So it happened or oh, what happened? You can explain. Um, okay, can you tell me what happened? Or what are you going to do if that is going to happen again? And then secondly, um, you know for a fact that there will be people who will get a breakdown after if, if there will be another storm coming so first and foremost those people who will who needs professional help should be given professional help and then those people who who became so depressed probably there will be a group of dynamics being done by volunteers so that they will be able to recover 
probably it's because of the fact that um, up to this time, they do not feel that life will get back to normal. Because if you feel that it's okay, it will, everything will become normal eventually, but you mm -hmm. cannot feel that, then probably what will happen is that you will try your best na, to, to feel that what is going to happen to me? Is it better to feel this depression? Is it better to, to end everything? So the long-term effect, there might be uh, more people who get so depressed, more people who might think, who might have suicidal thoughts, more people that after this will have PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress right. disorder. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult because having a post-traumatic um, stress disorder is somebody who might also experience some hallucinations, mm -hmm. some delusions, mm -hmm. that um, the hallucinations might be um, visual or auditory to the point that if they will hear the, the air whooshing like yes, that, yes. There, mm -hmm. there's going Trauma. to be... Uh, so it, that those things should also be addressed properly because definitely the trauma, the phobia, it can create confusion to the point that these people who cannot be given the proper assistance might end their life. So lastly, um, and really quickly, what what can they, um, what kind of, um, how can they pick themselves up for those? I mean, I know that people, everyone's saying that Filipinos are resilient, resilient. but you know, we're only human, and some people, like you said, will be going through some trauma post traumatic stress disorder and other disorders that we don't know mm -hmm. from this experience. So, how can they pick themselves up from this devastation? First and foremost, probably somebody should speak to them that everything will be back to normal. And to be able for us to be back to normal, we should help ourselves. It's so difficult, but then we should try. Because if we will not try to pick up the pieces that happen, probably that's the end of anybody there. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, we should have a good support system. And the good support system, not only friends, relatives, neighbors, but anybody who is there to say, we are here for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. We know what happened. Okay. So counseling and um, a support system. Yes, would be that's helpful. very important. Okay. Well, thank you so much for shedding some light on this matter and thank you for coming to Daybreak. That was Dr. Um, Camille Garcia. Welcome.